and welcome to this video about growth and uh, development and today we're going to be looking about how proteins are made. So proteins are essential for life. Um, all of the chemicals that control anything in your body, uh, like enzymes, are proteins and they're a hugely diverse um, group of molecules. In order to be able to make a protein, um, we have to have a blueprint or a set of instructions in order to make them. And that blueprint that we have inside every single cell is DNA. Now DNA is a very, very specific structure. Um, it's a double helix, um, and so it has two strands. And you can see here, this is our diagram um, of DNA. And so it has this strand on the right here and this strand on the left. You can see um, it's got a lot of these shapes um, that you probably won't recognize. Now, you don't technically need to know this for um, the exam. But what you have here is a phosphate group. That's the circle. You have um, a ribose sugar. Um, and the ribose is a pento sugar, so it's got five carbons, hence why it's got a pentagonal shape. And you have these bits in the middle here with the A's, the T's, the C's and the G's. Those are called bases. And it's those bases um, that are like the code that we use to make the protein. Now, you'll notice here on DNA that it binds in a very specific way. You'll notice that always, if you've got um, an A base here, or it's called adenine, that always binds to thymine. The C base, which is called cysteine, always binds to guanine. And that always happens all the way down. So whenever you get an A base, that binds with a T. Whenever you get a C, that binds with a G. And you only have those four bases. So these letters that you see here, the T, C, G and A, those are the sets of instructions that you can use to make the protein. Now, this is only showing um, four bases worth. In reality, within your cells, they have three billion bases. Um, and so you can start to imagine um, about how small this must be. In general, um, a load of these bases put together can make a specific protein. Now, specific proteins can have up to um, tens of thousands um, of amino acids. And so the code to make a protein is very, very long. And it's just shown here that this is only for, in reality, the code... Um, to make a single protein can be tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of these bases long. Now we can think of the DNA being like a, uh, a set of a, or a set of blueprints and they never leave the nucleus of the cell. So your DNA always stays in the nucleus. So what you need to do is you need to kind of take a photocopy or a, a copy of those of that information and be able to take it out to somewhere in order to make the protein. And so what happens when a protein is to be made um, the two strands of DNA unwind. And there's another chemical called RNA. In this case, it's called messenger RNA. And that comes in and binds to one of the strands of DNA. And again, um, it's got these complementary base pairs. You can see here that A binds with T and C with G. The only difference with mRNA is it doesn't have the T base. It actually has a U base instead. And what will happen is... This will join up and this can then leave the nucleus and take it to the place within the cell that makes the protein. Now, as it leaves the cell, this DNA can then close back up and so it can be ready again to be split so it can make um, another protein. Now, you can ignore most of this here, but what then occurs is you've got your strand of mRNA, which is a single strand. So if you remember, DNA is a double strand, the mRNA is a single strand. That mRNA is now free to leave the nucleus. And then this structure here called a ribosome can actually make um, the protein. Now, how this technically works, the mRNA is made of, can be made of thousands of bases. And we group those together in what we call a triplet. And basically, one of these triplets, so this AUG, that means, or that's a code for a specific amino acid. If you remember, amino acids go together to make up proteins. And what will happen is this ribosome will read this code, this AUG, and it will find, um, it will use something else to bring in the correct amino acid. And so in this case, the correct um, base pair will come in and it will bring with it this amino acid. And what will happen is the ribosome will move down and it will continuously read the code and the correct amino acid will be brought in and this will continue until it reaches a code on which means stop and it's at that point that the protein is made but all it is is this mRNA is a code and this ribosome reads the code so that 
the specific order um, of amino acids to make the correct protein is made. And so to review, where are the proteins made in the cell? They're made in the cytoplasm. And so the genetic code has to leave, um, or a copy of the genetic code called mRNA has to leave the nucleus. And it's ribosomes that actually put together um, the protein or put together the amino acids in the correct order. The genetic code is found in the nucleus. Remember, the DNA never leaves the, never leaves the nucleus. It stays within there. How does the code get into the cytoplasm? In this instance, the copy of the gene is taken um, from there. So it's a bit like a template that's been taken. So, And the thing that's taken is the mRNA. So the DNA stays in the nucleus. The mRNA takes a copy of it and then can move into the cytoplasm to the ribosomes. There are four different bases. They always pair up in the same way. So two strands of DNA will always pair up in the same way. A with T and C with G. And how is the order of the amino acids in the proteins determined? It's the order of the bases in the gene of the DNA um, that's used to code for it. And again, all your DNA is a code or a set of codes to make proteins.